Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Pastor Alan Cardenas. Hey, wanted to do, try to do something different this week um, in light of the coronavirus and all that's going on. Um, so I'm going to put a short video together. Um, but before um, we get into uh, the teaching, equipping, and inspiration of God's Word, I wanted to show you a short story. Uh, there was a guy, um, older guy, uh, that was uh, going to the gym and working out with his uh, trainer. And uh, he saw this good-looking girl walking past him, and then he looks at the trainer and asks, "Man, what what can I what what machine can I use to get uh, some somebody like that?" The trainer looked at the guy, and uh, the guy was older and so forth, and he said, "Try the ATM machine." <laughs> that might be funny for some of us, but the times that we're living in are not. And the question is, how do we take a Christ-like approach to the um, this uh, social distancing and the uh, coronavirus that's going on? So I want to share with you guys a couple of things. One is we should spread aloha and not corona. So is God surprised at what's going on today, here and now? Um, no, you know, Romans chapter 8, 28 says that we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. We know we love God. We know that we have purpose. But times like this, our purpose needs to be greater than the problems out there, the pain, and um, even some of the uncertainty and the worries. God has a plan for you. He has a future and a hope for you, and we have to hold on to that. Um, but also in light of that scripture, we need to think differently, and we need some shifts that we need to make. Uh, so I want to show you a couple of Beatitudes, a couple of things that we can do to be able to overcome these uh, uncertain times. So number one is be knowledgeable. Be knowledgeable and protect yourself. If you go to the CDC uh, website, there's a lot of good resources of how you can protect yourself, protect your family, and the people that sneer and dear to your heart. So want to make sure we don't you know, get caught up in some of the false information, but make sure we get accurate, reliable information. So uh, first be, beatitude is uh, be knowledgeable. Get accurate information from the CDC. Number two is this. Believe, believe that God is good. John 3, 16, uh, 17 talks about that, that God is so good. He loves the world and it's amazing. And that everyone who believes in him should not perish. We have a awesome God that the heart of God is that none should perish, but all come to know him. And that God sent his son into the world, not to judge it, not to condemn it, but to save it. So the second beatitude is believe that God is good. Turn to somebody next to you and say, God is good. If you don't have somebody next to you, find somebody, fellowship together, call them up and tell them God is good. And the third B I want to share with you guys is... Um, uh, believe that nothing is impossible with God. And Matthew 17, 20 talks about that. Because God is good, nothing is impossible with Him. So we got to hold on the hope of Christ here and now for such a time as this. The other thing, the other B is become. Become a disciple of Jesus. Jesus said, you know, if you believe in me, uh, remain faithful to my teaching. So what we need to do here and now, if we're his disciples, we need to be faithful and remain in his teaching. Hold on. There's nothing more powerful, nothing more bulletproof, coronaproof for such a time as this than the word of God. So become a, a disciple of Jesus. The other thing is John 3, um, John 13, 35 says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. This is where we spread aloha, not corona. We hold on to the, the word of Christ and the love of Christ because the love for one another, times like this, will prove to the world that we are his disciples. So that's a couple of beatitudes um, for us to be able to think about in times like this uh, in social distancing and the coronavirus. So we just have to think, you know, have the beatitudes to think that way. The other thing I want to talk about is um, how we how we structure, or maybe we need to restructure differently. Um, what we need to do is we need to look at uh, Jesus said to become his ecclesia. 
uh, at home and in a marketplace to be movers and shakers, momentum makers, history makers, and world changers for such a time as this. So we need to look at, you know, structuring ourselves in such a way that Jesus said. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock, I will build my ecclesia and the gates of hell cannot, shall not, and will not prevail. His ecclesia is people like you and I for such a time as this. No weapon form against us shall prosper, even Corona, because greater is a spirit in us than a spirit out there in the world. So we need to look at that, structure our way that we are his ecclesia. It's not just a building and especially how do we do church? Church in a time and a place that we can't meet in a building. We need to become as ecclesia. In fact, in Matthew 18, 20, the Bible says that where two or three are gathered, I am there. So it's not so much gathering in a building like we are uh, so used to doing in the past, but it's just people coming together, two or three, because if we get two or three gathered in His name, He will be there. There's nothing more important now than to have the presence of Jesus Christ in our life. The book of Acts talks about how we need to structure you know, uh, the ecclesia for such a time as this. In Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47, the Bible says that the early believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread and prayer. That's some essential things that we need to rally around. Some of us are used to rally around a worship team, a pastor, a pulpit, or a sermon. But what we need to do is rally around the presence of God by two or three gathering together in homes for such a time as this. So we need to be able to create resilient communities of two and threes. The Bible says they met in a temple and each other's homes. So now's the time that we gather in two or threes in our families, in our homes for such a time as this. So what do you do when you get together? Here's the activation. In the book of Acts, it talks about a couple of things that we can do. The first thing that we should do is gather together in our homes for prayer. There's nothing more powerful, more important, more potent that we can do is prayer. Create a praying community and praying a prophetic community to be able to declare and decree and speak forth the word of God that will go forth and not come back void. Joel chapter 2 verse 28 says, uh, It shall come to pass uh, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Isn't it, isn't it exciting? that God will pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. So what's the qualification for prophesying? Well, the Bible says that God will provide the Spirit if we provide the flesh. So all that's necessary for us to be able to create a prophetic community is, is flesh. We provide the flesh, two or three, God will provide the Spirit. He'll pour out His Spirit upon all people, that His sons and daughters will prophesy. Um, old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. This is a time that we need to hear the heart of God, the Word of God, so we can be able to speak forth uh, prophetically, not pathetically, prophetically, that will build up, encourage, and comfort, especially in times like this. So what is prophecy? Prophecy is basically knowing the heart of God, knowing the voice of God, so we can be able to share it with others. As we come together in our small groups, in our homes, God will pour out His Spirit in such a way that the world will know that we are His disciples. So one, create a praying community, create a prophetic community. Number two, study and obey the Word of God. We'll talk about that more next time. Um, worshiping together as a community. Um, fellowshipping together as a community. Growing together as a community. We need to build a resilient community for such a time as this. Serving together as a community. We've got some awesome events coming up that we can use your help. Also reaching out as a community. So that's a couple of things that we can do to activate our faith. So a couple of questions that you can do together in your small groups. The so what now what discussion questions. Number one, how are you going to be Jesus Ecclesia in your home? in your marketplace this week to build a strong and resilient community. Number two, what are you going to do to be a praying and prophetic community? What are you gonna do this week to do that? Number three, what are you gonna do to know, to hear, to study the voice and the heart of and the word of God so we can speak it for it prophetically? And number four, 
what are you going to do this week to spread aloha and not corona so that's our the word for this week i want to thank you for joining us father we thank you lord for our time together we pray over your disciples that not now is not a time to be pew potatoes but to be your disciple makers so lord god be with our families both near and far in such a way that we can launch an ecclesia movement for such a time as this we pray all these things in jesus name amen love y'all god bless until we meet again malama pono ahui ho aloha